next uh, next slide, we continue to talk about valve close-off. And so the actuator force uh, that's required to prevent the flow leakage is what's going to be required and, and measured and looked at. So here, uh, meeting all the valve selection and sizing criteria will be lost or remain if the valve cannot stop the flow or steam water, steam or water in the fully closed position. So really, the way to state this is, the you know, close-off is the actuator force required to prevent flow leakage. And this force can be and must be met with the proper selection of, of the pneumatic actuator. So the valve must be able to close off against the water sink flow completely so that this, and I'm trying to get the cursor to come across here, so this red area, area here as far as the uh, is the flow, and we need to have this plug be seated down in here to stop the flow of water in this particular case. So this actuator and uh, is with a specific spring range uh, is determined and uh, engineered to be able to make sure that this can close off against this amount of water pressure uh, or differential across this valve that the valve will be seen. And in this picture, we see the valve fully open. It's a 5 to 10 pound spring, and with a 5 pound branch pressure applied, the plug is fully up. So here we're heating. So we'll go to the next uh, line, next slide here, talking again what the, the, the valve starts to close with the increase in air pressure. Uh, it will push the stem down, causing the valve to move towards the closed position, and it will have the valve fully closed at 10 psi. So this area in here, once this air pressure that's coming into this port, coming up on top of here and pushing down, uh, pushes down on the stem at 10 pounds, this plug is fully seated uh, on this uh, valve seat. And therefore, there should be no flow through that section. You want to take mm. the next one here? Yeah. Okay. So when you look at the net force applied to the valve stem downward, it's really the force developed by the air acting upon the diameter of the diaphragm, but being opposed by the spring and the dynamic forces on the plug. So what that means essentially is only a certain portion of the energy delivered by the air is actually used as thrust to drive the stem downward. If we apply a high differential pressure to the valve or one that is in excess of what the valve was selected to close off against, we'll end up with a small amount of leakage past the seat. That's what that red arrow, arrow is, trying, is to trying to show. represent, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. so. Uh, once, and once you start having any kind of leakage across there, you get all, all kinds of, uh, of issues. So this stuff, again, valve close off here for the close off rating as this high head pressure from the water comes through here, you start uh, to have problems with this leakage. So therefore, you're not actually controlling uh, the water temperature going into the coil. Uh, you're getting valve wear. And what we mean by that is that as the water or steam that's coming across this plug, it's got such a small area to come across as it's leaking, it actually starts to cut into the uh, valve seat and start to cut into the actual uh, plug assembly and erodes away a certain section of the metal there that if it happens over a long period of time, uh, you'll get a, a valve that's continuing to leak all the time and will not be able to control the system. And uh, when troubleshooting something like that, oftentimes it's helpful to remove the bonnet and actually inspect the plug in the seat and, and use that as maybe some evidence uh, to select a different valve and actuator combination when you replace it. Yeah. And okay. what we'll see next is what is typically done to counteract that in a normal system. As the upward force that's working in opposition to the actuator becomes greater with the greater differential across the valve, if the valve seat is still good, the temperature in the space will continue to rise, the branch pressure from your thermostat will increase and apply more downward force. And again, if the valve seat and uh, plug are good, we'll apply enough pressure to ultimately seal that valve off. But as Carl had said before, if it's wire drawn or damaged or otherwise compromised, additional branch pressure on the actuator will not change or reduce the flow of steam or water through the valve. Well, let's take a look then at the next slide, which talks about the close-off tables. And this one's a little bit difficult to, to read, so, so bear with us here. Uh, as somebody, as an application engineer, is looking at designing 
and applying what is the right size valve and what is the right size actuator, uh, they go to a, a table that might look similar to this. Uh, the first part that we're looking for is that on the side here, they're looking for a particular two-way valve. And this is a two-inch valve with a part number V as in Victor, 5011, N as in Nancy, uh, 1099, it looks like. And if we take that same valve and take a look at what this column coming over here represents, we then apply a particular valve actuator of whether it's normally open or normally closed, stem up or stem down with, without air pressure. We find that model number, and this particular selection, we're looking at an MP953C1067, and we come down in this column, match the left and right, and we see that this red circle is circling 122 PSI of pressure, which means that this will uh, close off, this actuator with this valve combination will close off against 122 pounds of pressure differential across the valve. And so it would take a lot of uh, pumping pressure in order to start to push this up uh, and start to move uh, the plug off of its seat. So 122 pounds of close-off pressure. Now, but Johnny also talked a little bit about as far as that this is a different rating than is that uh, static rating or static pressure rating. We want to differentiate, right? Right, exactly. Because when you look at a valve, the close-off is a matter of the differential that the valve sees. In other words, if you were to look at a set of pressure gauges across that valve, both sides of the valve with the pump off might be at 30 pounds. And the valve really doesn't see any differential to act upon. But when the pump starts, the differential created by the pump is ultimately in part what this valve needs to close off against. So when you're selecting a valve, you need to advise those that are part of that selection process what your actual differential pressure will be so that they can select the appropriate size actuator and spring. Another interesting thing uh, on this table, if you look just one number above the 122 pound value that Carl had pointed at, you'll see that the close off goes up to 210 pounds for an inch and a half body. Well, it's the same actuator, and the only difference essentially is that the plug inside the one and a half inch valve is smaller. There's less surface area for the water or steam to act upon, and that's why our, our net force available for closure is higher with a smaller body valve. So the big issue that you have to be careful of when retrofitting or selecting valves, especially as they get larger, is that we need to keep in mind the spring range and the actuator size so that we have enough net force available to close the valve. Now, what's interesting here, and we might not have been uh, real clear on it before, but with the normally open valve examples, the branch pressure aids in closing the valve, meaning as the pressure rises, the stem is driven down against the seat and it closes. Normally closed valves, however, don't rely on the air pressure to close them. It's the spring range and the actuator size that ultimately gives you your close off there. So in the absence of air, again, being that it's a normally closed valve, the valve closes, but its closure pressure differential is a function of the spring range and actuator size. Great point, John. So I just wanted to clarify that. We'll uh, jump to the next uh, table. This is for uh, electric actuators. We won't touch on this much, but as you might imagine, a uh, electric actuator and valve combination has to be selected with the same concern and uh, care to allow that to be closed or open when it should be. The next slide shows kind of a visual wrap-up of uh, what we just talked about in the table. So across the bottom, although it's very difficult to see, there's the close-off pressure ratings. Diagonal lines are actually the different valve flow coefficients or valve sizes, the equivalent of it essentially. Every valve has got a flow coefficient and a valve size. But what you can see is the, uh, the lighter slopes, the lower CVs, have the higher close-off pressures than obviously the larger CVs, larger valves. And this graph kind of depicts the, the culmination of the spring range, the close-off pressure, and the valve size. Anyone helping you to troubleshoot a valve here at ICD We'll probably be using a graph very much like this if you should happen to call and uh, need to specify a replacement or if you're troubleshooting a valve that isn't acting properly. 